Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Sweet Spot. We are your hosts. I'm Diane. And I'm Michael Pinball Clements. And we are so excited to be here today. The Sweet Spot really is joy unspeakable, having balance in all you do. It's being grateful, even when things aren't great. The desire to help others when you may be hurting yourself. It is submission to a sovereign God who is in control when things look good or bad. The sweet spot means happy times are happier, challenging times are growth opportunities, and love is the ruler of the day. The sweet spot is resting and sometimes wrestling in the arms of the Almighty. Simply put, if you're in your sweet spot, you're probably abiding in the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So we hope you join us as we take this journey and engage in topics that we hope will inspire, encourage, challenge, uplift, excite, insight, refresh, restore, revitalize, comfort, Stimulate and strengthen each of you in your daily walk. Welcome to the sweet spot. <laughs> we have two of the nicest people you ever want to meet and our personal mentors, Ms. Georgia Kearns and Steve Kearns, are joining us today. Welcome. Well, thank thanks, you. guys. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. And our title today is Coaches for Christ. They were our coaches. You know, we, we hear about today, well, players have coaches for everything. They have someone who, who coaches them, trains them. Uh, then there's someone who takes care of their diet. Well, for many decades, uh, little known fact that, well, players actually have spiritual coaches. And these are our coaches who mentored us when I was playing and, and uh, uh, Diane uh, was uh, so capably uh, new to the country. Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. And, and so uh, this it was such a profound experience. They've had such a profound impact in our lives. And so we we want to talk to them a little bit first of all about mentoring us, and then we'll get into a little bit more about what they actually do. Okay. Yeah. For me, when when I came. Um, I had no family here, didn't know anyone, and I was so shy. I was so shy at that time. And Georgie kind of took me under her wing and, you know, just introduced me to the other wives and girlfriends of the team. And, you know, I was like her shadow. And I remember specifically when, um, after going through Bible study and one-on-one -on -one discipleship and all of that with Georgie, and she came up to me one day and she says, um, I have plans for you to share your testimony. <laughs> and I'm telling you, I, I froze. <laughs> I completely froze. I started sweat. I freaked out. Yes, and I was like, Georgia, I can't do this. No, I can't. She's like, yeah, you Diane, you can do this. I'll help you. I'll walk you through it. We'll write everything else. I don't have anything to say. Like, my life is boring. What do I have to say? She's like, everybody has a testimony. Trust me. And I'm telling you, that was probably the best thing that you could have ever done for me because for me it really did it it first of all took me out of that shy zone um, as far as because I was used to singing in front of people but speaking and putting my thoughts together and on paper that was difficult for me and once you took me through that and you showed me you can do this like yeah. you just take your time and just be real tell your story because everybody has a story and no one knows your story but you and I took that to heart, and um, I just want to say thank you because that You're was, for welcome. me, that was truly, um, I, I don't even know, life-changing, but it really was very inspirational for yeah. me to be able to do that. So thank you for that. You were quite <laughs> welcome. It was my privilege. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was shy, too. Yeah. yeah. We six, all know better. Six, 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 we all know better, six honey. Years okay. old, six yeah. years old, I was shy. Yeah. Um, but a similar experience happened for me. We were in Kingston, Ontario, and Steve asked me to share my testimony for the first time. And mm. so while I w w was not shy at that time, um, I, I still, I, I, I was very open about my relationship with God, about, and I was very free to, to talk and, and, you know, in university, even debate a little bit, right, and, and have fun mm -hmm. with it. But it was 
I, I, I was, it was always a reactive thing. We got into discussion. I was never proactive before that point. And, um, and while you knew that you had anxiety, right, you were right. honest, mm -hmm. I, I had the same anxiety, but I wouldn't admit it. So it was, it was quite, a, quite a, um, an opportunity uh, that, that you gave me and that you encouraged me and you supported me on. And, um, and from that day, we've, we've openly shared so many times, and you gave us the impetus for that. So thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. You've done a great job, too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you might have had to pull the mic away from you. Just once or twice. Just once or twice. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Yes. 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 Yeah, I guess that's why my mom called me Mike. Yes. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. Oh, so good, good. So now that we've gotten a start, t tell us exactly, tell, we want you to tell the people what you do, and, and we'll, we'll start there, but we'll also t talk a little bit about how you got started. But, t but tell, tell people what you do. Well, I'll start, I guess. Um, we work with Athletes in Action, which is a ministry of Power to Change mm -hmm. uh, Canada, and it's international ministry that actually did start in the U.S., uh, but started here in Canada in about 1974. So our involvement is with the uh, pro division of Athletes in Action in Canada. So we serve as chaplains for the uh, Hamilton Tiger Cats, and uh, we used to work with the other team down the road. The Ar oh, the Argos. Yeah, That's yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. The Argos, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, we had 20, 21 years there, but we had a lot of fun. Of course, yes. that's where we uh, ran into you guys, and uh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, and then for uh, 20 years now, I think, with the uh, Toronto Raptors, Herbie Kuhn and I uh, tag team over there doing some chaplaincy there, chapels and Bible studies. And also now in the last five years or so, got involved some with the uh, TFC. And so, Did you do any work with the Blue Jays? Uh, I did. Georgie spent Georgie a year did. there. Right. So, um, and uh, then, yeah. So with the Bulldogs. Yeah, so we do, yeah, I did a, a season there as well, but... Uh, predominantly those other three teams mm -hmm. and we'll do Bible studies uh, we'll do pregame chapels uh, just some one-on-one -on -one stuff and um, well some of Georgie's one-on-one -on -one is at malls and uh, they're sightseeing things with kids like and whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, those are. Uh, yeah, those yeah. I, I thought you were going to maybe mention that. I showed you shopping. where all the malls were shopping with. She Canada, was trained but, by the best. But, uh, that, that's kind of predominantly just some one-on-one -on -one and just interacting with, with players. And, and then Georgie does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Steve and I met at Liberty University, yes. so it's just kind of humorous mm. how God knows where you're going to go. Right. He thought he was going to, um, we were both phys ed, Steve was going to do high school, I was going to do elementary, and God had other plans. Wow. He was drafted into the Canadian Football League out of Liberty. Steve's Canadian, I'm from Philadelphia, uh, he's from Ontario, but um, when we got into football, AIA was just starting. So we had chapels and we had Bible studies with right. Gordon and Nancy Barwell. Yes. And um, just as Gordon was getting ill and was very sad, he's only mm -hmm. in his early 40s, they and Paul Henderson, mm -hmm. the, the yes. hockey player, yes. uh, Paul and Eleanor. Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> Here in Canada, yeah. everybody knows yeah. where they were. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like the JFK thing. You know yes. where you oh, were yeah. when. Yeah. 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 So they recruited us into Athletes in Action wow. because we were involved, and they were like, hey, we could really use you guys um, because of our Bible background with Liberty mm -hmm. and just our love for the Lord. So that's how we got started that's with AIA. It's very similar to you guys. Get involved yeah. in the Bible studies and chapel. Mm -hmm. And it just blossomed from there. Wow! Yeah. Absolutely. Wow! Yeah, that's awesome. Good, good. So, so you got you got started. Um, so, how was when you say got started? Like, what was the first year like? Do you remember the very first year? The very first, like, how how did it start? How did it start? Well, I, I, partly as uh, no other team wanted me, so <laughs> you make that transition, and so. That uh, summer was night. Well, it'd be thirty years. So when you say no other team wanted you, this is this is this sort is of retiring from football. football so, yeah. so people know. He was so, playing for Ty Cats, mm -hmm, BC yeah. Lions before that. Yes. And so then uh, that's when we were, you know, asked that we go. You know, we decided that's what we do. And so the first year is it's interesting because you know, of course, I was really young when I started. <laughs> yeah. Right. And, <laughs> but I I went from being. So it was an interesting dynamic of being still a peer because some right. of the guys that I'd, I had played with uh, were still on the team. And then, of course, now we're, we're more like 
parents, so <laughs> to, <laughs> to the players, which is, which is interesting. And so yes. I think for me, I was I was comfortable in Hamilton um, then, but I was involved with the Argos, so that was a little uncomfortable. Uh, I remember Obi <laughs> was the, was the coach then, and and I remember him going. Uh, what are you doing over here? You know, he was kind of like, a tie cat spy. Well, what are you doing? You know, so I, I really, you know, you guys all know what you're doing anyway. So I was like, I'm not showing you any secrets. Uh, so it was, it was, it was hard in in a sense um, for me because I again I'm I, I'd be more like Diane. I'm more, I'm more of a shy, you know, um, sort of to get into somewhere new. It took me a while right. to feel comfortable, um, but you know, I think after a while, I just I felt comfortable, but it took me a while to be honest mm. to wow. be comfortable in a, in a different setting. I was like I said, out of sight of Hamilton. I, I felt comfortable there, but um, doing that was harder. Now to backtrack. Yeah. Um, how many years did you play in the CFL? I played six years. Six years. Okay. Six years. Okay. BC and then with Hamilton. Very good. That's where okay. I finished my career and it's kind of still in the area. And I was a player's wife. That's right. So that's how I could relate to how these girls felt. That's right. And I remember as a teenager seeing pro athletes' wives mm-hmm. in fur coats and mm-hmm. thinking and diamonds and thinking, oh, wow, yeah. what a glamorous <laughs> life. You know? And then as Shelly Austin shared with me a couple mm-hmm. weeks ago, it's a little different. Different when you're on the inside. It's an amazing blessing. Mm-hmm. It's so fun. Mm-hmm. But there are some rough things things right. as well like Absolutely. leaving your family leaving your comfort mm-hmm. zone you know Absolutely. coming to a new place being by yourself that's right. that's so right. I think that helped give us a holy boldness oh, very good. because mm, I, I like knew that. how yes. these girls felt right. yes. and um, I think God set us up at Liberty we did well at Liberty right. Right. Um, Liberty gave us um, positions um, uh, that made us feel confident. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I said to my girlfriend one time, I think I have a lot of self-confidence, and she gave me the greatest compliment. She said, no, Georgie, you have God confidence. Right. Oh. And I was like, okay, that's hey. cool. I yes. like that. Yes. Yes. You know, that it's kind of like we can step in where mm-hmm. angels fear to tread. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, so we can step in and go, hey, would you like to start a Bible study? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> and, there, and, the, and just... It, Finding favor. Right. Oh, I've been looking for someone. That's right. I, I've been in church all my life and I don't get it. Wow. I've been looking for someone to disciple me. It's mentoring, discipleship. Yes. Now they call it life coach. Okay. You yes. know, but but it was a perfect fit for us. And our That's education's awesome. our background. Right. So it's cool how God works those things. So yeah. so um, let's speak to sort of the beginnings again in a little bit more detail here so so do you remember your first chapel or your first bible study wow do i remember no (laughs) (laughs) so it's it's one of the yes it's i i sometimes i remember specific things but that one i I don't actually remember my i remember the first time as a player when the same as you having to do my Testimony, testimony. In, yes. in Vancouver mm. at a conference yes. in a high school, mm. and, and right. I was similar to Diane, where I thought, well, my story is certainly different than Diane's, yeah. but it was like, what am I going to sh- talk about these kids? Right. Like, you know, I thought it was like, <laughs> but okay, well, like I said, everybody has a story mm. and mm-hmm. it's different. And so I remember that I remember, but the first chapel, mm, wow. I, I, I know it was probably 1986. Yeah. But I don't remember the actual specific. Yeah. So for me, we were there, we were Lone Rangers. Yes. Because I don't know if Steve remembers this, but I remember Steve calling from the office where he and Gordy worked, mm-hmm. and Gordy was in Princess Margaret because right. he had a brain tumor, right. Right. and he was passing of mm-hmm. cancer. Mm-hmm. We didn't have the foggiest what we were doing. We wow. were just flying by the seat of our pants. Right. And Steve was like, he called me and he's like, George, do you think Gordy would mind if I went through his desk? Cause I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> and he's sick, you know. Yes. So I said, I know Gordy oh. wants us to do well. Go through the desk. Oh find gosh. anything you can wow. find to help us 
pull this right, off right. and what we're supposed to do. So Steve went yeah. through, you know, Gordy's desk. And, and of course, Paul and Eleanor were there mm-hmm. for us to call. And they encouraged us. And yes. they, because we're like, it's similar to missionaries. Mm-hmm. We had to raise support. That's right. Mm-hmm. And we still do to this day. It's 30 mm-hmm. years of support raising. So uh, wow. kudos to Steve because that's tough. Wow. You that know, but tough. Paul and Eleanor, Eleanor were great. And they still are on our support team helping us with right. the support. Right. You know, because we started having babies. And, right. you know, so it was the early days. But for me, um, in Hamilton, it was, these were the girls that uh, Steve played with her, their husbands. Right. So um, Sarah Malinowski helped me get the wives study going. And it went very well because the girls actually said we're jealous of our husbands. And then I realized there's such a thing as a godly jealousy. Mm-hmm. Their husbands were having chapel and Bible study, yeah. and they're home alone with and the kids. And they're not, yes. And they can see their husbands That's growing right. spiritually, and they weren't. That's right. So that was really cool. It was easy for right. Sarah and I, and we had fun stuff. We had hairdressers come in. We mm-hmm. went shopping mm-hmm. together, but then we got together around the Word. And then in Hamilton, Reggie and Jessica Pleasant, right. yes. and Jessica and I were getting the girls in. I remember taking care of, watching out for Mikey, and this <laughs> little girl from Florida is coming up. Yes. <laughs> Jessica and I have to check her out. Yes. She's worthy. And you guys gave me the rundown. Um, yeah, we're checking her out, making sure she's worthy of our Mikey. It wasn't a pinball. It was Mikey, making sure she's worthy. And she came up, and it was like, she's <laughs> awesome. She's perfect. And then when Jess left, I, I, you could just see the leadership in Diane. And the minute Jess left, Diane rose to the occasion, an amazing leader then, an amazing leader now. And the girls really respected her. Mm. And you guys walk your talk, and that's what's needed. Mm. Uh, um, uh, Thank you for Mm -hmm. amazing stories. Um, And uh, they bring back so many memories. I want to talk a little bit about um, what what you find most difficult as you began. Was it it, the Bible study more difficult, the chapel, or or is it one-to-one? And, and maybe talk, talk a little bit about today. What, you, what do you enjoy most? Well, I, I probably initially the, the one-to-one um, in a sense of building new relationships mm. for me was probably a little harder. Mm. Um, but I think now that's probably what I enjoy. Right. Maybe more than, I, I, I mean, I enjoy it, all aspects of it, but I think more the the one to one interaction and you know kind of build now I'm building some relationships with with new guys and I feel a lot more comfortable doing that and the the Bible study I mean chapel's good too but I, I think with the I, I think for me I think right. with the Bible study you get a little bit more uh, you get a little bit more interaction and, right. and that mm-hmm. kind of thing where you know chapel is more of a kind of a churchy kind of thing where you know their minds on a game and right. and there's not a lot of interaction so the other part is uh you know the time especially in football and in the locker room and and those kinds of things being able to just interact with players and meet them where they're at right and i that i that i enjoy any any particular players easier to talk with or any more difficult than another from sport to sport yeah i I don't think culture, I don't maybe. think they're any harder. I think it's more just the access mm. is what I find anyway. And I think with the the football, we have more access as far as being able to go to practice and mm-hmm. access into the locker rooms and those kinds of things. Um, but as far as just once you have that interaction, mm-hmm. they're just like anybody else, right? right? Yeah. right. right. And so. That's what I find anyway. I do find, though, you know that verse in the Bible that talks about a rich man Mm -hmm. and the eye of the needle? Yes, yes. I understand that scripture a little bit because the more money involved, Mm -hmm. the more difficult it is. Like Steve mentioned access. Mm -hmm. But the CFL isn't making quite as much money. Mm -hmm. So the girls are always around. Mm -hmm. We're keeping each other company when the guys are on the road. But like the Blue Jay Wives, the year I did them, which was the uh, the World Series year, that's right, so that's that was a cool that. year. Yes. But they had enough money that they'd leave. You know, they'd go on the road mm-hmm. with the guys, or they'd go home for a month. Right. So it was a little bit more difficult. And and sadly, they have to guard their hearts in yes. these in, with the Raptors because there's always someone hitting on them that's for right. something. something. That's right. And Steve and I have made it our. Thing. We don't hit on you. We give. Right. We don't take. Right. 
So our apologies to all the churches and all the people <laughs> in our lives for the past 30 years that kept saying, can you get a signed jersey? Can you get a football? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Generally, the answer is no, because we don't even ask for an That's autograph. Right. Right. Because right. there's always someone trying to take something mm-hmm. from an athlete mm-hmm. or their wife, and there's a, a shield. Mm-hmm. And we have to get Very through that point. shield that, you know right. what, you can trust us. Mm-hmm. We're not going to take from you. We will give to you. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and that has worked for us. Wow. Yeah. Now, um, you both... In, in, in the position that you have, you're marriage counselors, you're psychologists, you're family counselors, like you, really, you're teachers, you're all that to the athletes and their wives. Mm-hmm. Um, do you ever get discouraged sometimes when, when you're counseling couples and just seeing the different things that the athletes are going through? Are you ever discouraged? Hmm, that's a good question. I think, I guess I've I've always kind of just seen them as as they're not, they're not mine, mm-hmm. and I think you know they're not my players, they're not right. my, they're gods, and so I, th- yeah, I mean anytime you get discouraged if, you know things uh, don't go away, you maybe think they should <laughs> go, but I, I've I've tried anyway to kind of go you know what, they're gods people, and if I can be whatever kind of role that I can bring. For that particular time, because right. sometimes you have six months, sometimes like with you guys in the Pleasants, you know, you, you get eight or nine years, or twenty, and it's, which, yeah. is, <laughs> which is which is great, right? As, as a player, so um, so that I think for me, uh, that if I keep that in mind, that it yeah. helps um, the the discouragement part. Okay. But yeah, there's times here where you kind of go, oh man, is this? Am I wasting my time or whatever? And so, but it's like no, it's not a waste of time. Right. And who knows how God uses it, and that's kind of how I've kind of mm-hmm. try to keep it in my mind anyway. Mm-hmm. So I think the only time that I've been incur- um, discouraged is I have been stood up like three times, mm-hmm. and um, it's my pride <laughs> that really <laughs> hurt my feelings. Yes, yes. You know, it's like, what am I doing? Right. It's, it's when Satan attacks mm-hmm. and oh, goes, yeah. you know yeah. what, Georgie could be making a lot more money. Yeah. You, you're above this, right. yes. you know. And then it's like, and then I. It, all three times I knew I found out the reasoning okay. and it's like okay come back from the edge yes. you know yes. so yes we're human those kinds of things are discouraging right. when we get short checked right that's very difficult I, I will say and I think Steve would agree we have loved 99% of this ministry and we are we are teachers we're not salespeople right. so the support raising is probably the only discouraging thing to us mm-hmm. right. if you get short checked ready to kick her out of Bible study, which I've never heard of. But the other girls were like, no, George, kick her out. She's in trouble. And then I I worked with her Mm one-to-one, and she'd be weeping when I heard Mm -hmm. her story. And when I found out she's now a believer, but what she came from, I realized, oh, but for the grace of God, I'd be way more damaged, way way more. And she was a pleasure as she Mm -hmm. grew and as we understood Mm -hmm. where she was coming from. It usually is a cry for help. It it? is. It is. Um, and, you know, we, we talk about this so much, but, you know, people really do look at athletes and think that they don't have issues. So, so yeah. may, maybe um, if, if you'll both discuss from, from the players and, and the wives' standpoint, what, what are the common things that, that guys and gals struggle with? Uh, well, insecurity. I mean, you know, you, sometimes you see from the outside, but... Mm-hmm. You know, the nature of the game, of nature of sports, is it can cause a lot of insecurities mm-hmm. because you get your identity from your performance. And, you know, so if you get released or you're, even yeah. if you're, you get injured, you know, and you feel like, oh, I'm not part of this team, I'm not valuable, nobody cares. Uh, I think those are uh, some things. Uh, well, relationships are mm-hmm. hard to, right? Because a lot of times it's just, do people want to know you because of what you do? Right. right. Uh, or is it because are. they just want to get to know you? Right. So that's another, um, you know, there's there's a lot of, uh, well, I think there's a lot of, uh, you're in you're in the public eye, mm-hmm. and so things, everybody's just scrutinizing you and, and maybe making uh, those, not like, like Georgia with this, like not really knowing the person, so right. you make these assumptions, right. and so what people think of you, 
uh, can sometimes uh, be a struggle. Yeah. Um, but the, you know, those. I mean, there's anything that everybody else struggles with. They have the same struggles. Right. It's just that it's in the public eye. Yeah. Right. So I, I think you know, if you're at home struggling with something, they're struggling with the same thing. Yeah. I think um, two of the things that popped in my mind when you mentioned it is even expectations from the players' families, me family members. Right. Mm -hmm. wow. Huge. Um, yes. Baba, I'm short of cash. Mm -hmm. Can you send me a yes. thousand? Yes. yes. I had one of my girls, her best friend, will no longer talk to her. Wow. And this is in elite sport. This isn't the CFL. Mm -hmm. yes. And I was like, well, did you do something to offend her? What did you do? Well, she wanted us to give her a million dollars to start a business, and we prayed about it and thought, that's probably not the route we go. Right. Right. It's like, what? Wow. You know, those expectations, mm -hmm. wow. you know, or wow. even moms mm -hmm. yeah. or brothers. Mm -hmm. I thought she'd fly yeah. me up in first class. Yeah. Wow. But, yeah. The, so, so working it's with, hard. yeah, it's the, hard. no, this is false guilt. Mm -hmm. you, you do not have to be mm -hmm. guilty. Mm -hmm. You, you and I had that conversation. A 60 inch yeah. television. Yes. You yeah. bought a 50 inch yes. television. Yeah. So, oh. so that money, that money thing's tough. Mm -hmm. So that, and then for the women, it's expectations for external. There's yeah. just this thing that, oh, you're a player's wife, you should look perfect. Mm -hmm. You had a baby last week, but you yes. should be your same weight, that's right. if not thinner. That's right. So yes. the expectations on appearance, mm -hmm. wow. that's really mm -hmm. rough on a People girl. People seem and to forget that you're human. You yeah. are human. You're just like that. You're human. Yeah. You know, and, and there are groupies out there. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about some of the most beautiful women in the world, and I don't know what's happened to damage their souls. Mm -hmm but they're willing to give themselves away, mm -hmm. you know? And for some reason, movie stars and athletes are the people they gravitate to. Yeah. So the insecurity of the wife, mm -hmm. the marriage, keeping the marriage strong. Mm -hmm. um, yes. As you mentioned, those different things, we're not professional counselors, mm -hmm. taking lots of master's courses mm -hmm. on marriage and family counseling, right. all that, but we're not professional counselors, right. we're friendship counselors. Yeah. And we use God's mm -hmm. word. Now we we have actually been going to counselors this week mm -hmm. this year to check out are we are we giving wise scientific <laughs> advice right you know the science the medicine right. and I think we've been right on good for you and the counselors we good work on are like no you guys are it's right on That's awesome. you know it's in sync so it's holistic mm -hmm. it's the spiritual as well as the science the right. the physical All right know. so so you've been coaching athletes and their wives. Uh, really their families for all of these years. Mm -hmm. You've made such a huge impact in our lives. Would you do us a favor and uh, and, and just take you know, something that you um, really believe has worked um, uh, with uh, players and wives or a favorite or favorite character. But, but what I want you to do now is I want you to, to go out there and coach <laughs> the listeners a little yes. bit. Just both of you, I, I'd like both of you to just present a little bit of uh, a little message to our listeners and, and coach them <laughs> from coach them like you need to coach us. <clears throat> All right, I'll, uh, I'll defer to uh, Georgie first. Let me go okay. first. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, you mentioned it, probably one of the verses that came to my mind that I love is, he will never leave you, he'll never forsake you. Mm. It's... Um, mentioned in the Old Testament, it's mentioned in the yes. New Testament. And I think for us, it's a choice. When you invite Jesus Christ as your Savior into your life, mm -hmm. what you're saying is, I cry, Uncle, I don't want to do this alone. I need right. help. Please, Jesus, come into my life. Take control. And he says, I'll give you the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So he never leaves you. He never forsakes you. Two years ago, I went through colon cancer. Mm. Wasn't sure if I was going to live. Mm -hmm. Well, what's the difference between me and someone else? Nothing. Right. We both had cancer. Yeah. We both had the same odds. Right. But I didn't go through it alone. That's right. Not once did he leave me alone. Right. I've had other problems. I have other issues where it's like, where are you, God? Mm -hmm. Like, Jesus, my God, my God, mm -hmm. why have you forsaken me? Mm -hmm. You know, but going through, and, and he's always answered eventually. Right. But through the colon cancer, it was like, I'll never leave you. I'll never right. forsake you. So do I want to make a choice of, I'm going to go through hard times. The Bible says that. In this right. world, you go through hard times. Um, you'll go through troubles. Right. Do I want to do it alone, or do I want it with my Savior? Right. Wow. And man, going through it with my Savior is so much sweeter. Still tough. Still right. brutal. Mm -hmm. 
Right. Still awake at night, sometimes reading the Psalms, mm-hmm. but not never alone. Mm. So, so I think Beautiful. that's my thing with the girls I work with. So you might have come to Canada, you might have come from the West Coast, right. but you're never alone. That's right. Yeah, good. I, I think for me, uh, Philippians chapter three has been a verse that, um, or mm-hmm. chapter, but the thirteen twelve to thirteen fourteen and there about yes. keep pressing on because mm. um, you know I think. I, well, <laughs> I know in life here it, it is it is a it is a process and, yes. and you're gonna you're gonna need to get up and, and keep going, right? And and so I think sometimes in my own life I need to remember that and, and also for the guys that we work with, uh, that you know, you gotta give them give them time and right. and just be encouraging and be accepting and, and and walk the journey with them. So I think those people that you're mm-hmm. around, if you can do that then um, and not not be their judge and uh, mm-hmm. let God do his work wow. then and encourage them along the way and so mm-hmm. whether it's you've done something like in sports you've done something really well or right. not so well in a game mm-hmm. you just it doesn't really matter the next play that's right you got to just keep going so so in uh, life the same thing so, so would you mind just sharing the whole scripture with them it because the, I, you know I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me is the one that everybody knows but the, mm-hmm. the 12 13, 14 because the word never returns void so would you just sort of you know, maybe just uh, oh like you're asking yes, me to remember that now yes, yes, <laughs> but, uh, we're, uh, just uh, we're over 50 yeah, but yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> well it's it's uh, chapter 3 of Philippians and uh, the apostle Paul says I um in general, I, I count all things but loss for the sake of Christ, mm-hmm. and those things I, uh, uh, forgetting, put behind, mm-hmm. I yes. press on to that's become right. who yeah. Christ has called me to be. Yeah. And so right. that's kind of the general, because you did put me on the spot. I might have yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's but, uh, awesome. the, the memorizing <laughs> thing, but uh, <laughs> that's kind of the, um, yes. the, and that's what I usually, that, well, that's on my email, uh, kind mm-hmm. of the clue, and just keep pressing on. Right, keep uh, pressing this, on. This is how I sign off so that's yes. beautiful uh, so that's what i that's what i need yeah I, yes there's helps. life after football well, and there's life after earth that's yes. right yes. that's yes. right Absolutely. i like yes. that keep yeah. pressing on yeah. that's right. that's beautiful right. that's so beautiful. um i'll never leave you nor forsake you is the promise so mm-hmm. you will be there with us and then the process right Mm -hmm. keep pressing on Mm -hmm. right so you've heard it from your coaches the time has just flown by i can't believe it's over already oh my goodness so um, yeah that's awesome we're so grateful for having you god bless you yes thank you thank you both for joining us would you for us please before we go so so yes you you do you you have to raise support and so this is an opportunity to kind of just say where can people go and support you Oh, that's good. So they can actually go to uh, powertochange.org, and uh, there's a, they can go online, and there's a, uh, I think on the right-hand side of that page, there's a, you know, there's a place to give, and then on that, you can look up uh, our name, Steve and Georgie Kearns, and that'll take you to where yeah, you need to action. go. Yeah. In the States uh, is Campus Crusade for Christ. Right. Or yes. call me at 289 455 That's awesome. Thank you guys so much Thank for joining you. us you today. Guys make us proud. And, and yeah. like we always so want to end the show with words of Edward Everett's I am only one, but I am one. I cannot do everything, but I can do something. What I can do, I ought to do. And what I ought to do, by the grace of God, I will do. Stay in your sweet spot. Until next time. Woo! Good job. <laughs> <laughs>